So we're going to begin by looking at the Daily Mirror and thinking about how it fits within the newspaper industry and its place as a popular tabloid. So the Daily Mirror was established in 1903. During this time, it was aimed at a predominantly working class audience. It has a left wing political stance. So it is socialist, Labour Party supporting, anti-conservative, anti-right wing in its approach to news. This means that it is in support of social development, workers' rights, and it is kind of anti some of the more uh, traditional views and some of the more stagnant views in society. In particular, at the moment, in the current climate, um, the Daily Mirror would support Jeremy Corbyn and would support the Labour Party over Theresa May and the Conservative Party. This isn't much of a surprise because historically uh, it was Robert Maxwell being a, one of the founding uh, media moguls of his era. Now Robert Maxwell was part of the Labour Party but also he was the driving force behind the Daily Mirror in its infancy. Um, we don't want to go into too much detail about the history but it might be uh, interesting to know that he ended up meeting his fate on a yacht um, and the surroundings of his death is still quite mysterious. So he is one of these influential media tycoons um, who again, not for the purposes of this exam, but just as a little bit of background, it might be interesting to look up his story and who he was. But for the purposes of this, we just need to know that it is a Labour Party established newspaper. It's always been socialist leaning. It has always claimed that it is on the side of the masses of the workers. To this end, it has been become known as the intellectual tabloid, the tabloid that people don't really mind being seen reading, the tabloid who think about events and think about society and are on the side of the everyday person. In addition to this, you need to know that the Daily Mirror is owned by a company called Reach PLC. Before this, it was named Trinity Mirror, which is what it might say in your revision guide. Um, and this is its parent company. This is the organisation who uh, own both the website um, and the print editions of the Mirror, as well as other newspapers and as well as other publications in the industry. So if we have in mind that the Daily Mirror is a socialist, left-wing, um, anti-conservative newspaper, it shouldn't come as a surprise that the reaction that it has to the Trump campaign and subsequent um, victory in the American election is a negative one. So if we have a look at the front page of the newspaper that forms our set product, it's clear to see through the symbolic codes, through the action codes, through the enigma codes, that the reaction to the winning of Donald Trump is overall, by and large, portraying it as a catastrophe for America, but not just America, for the world as well. The Daily Mirror obviously follows the codes and conventions of tabloid news. In this case, it's very typical of a tabloid newspaper. You have the red top, for example, that characterises the tabloid press. You have the absence of large quantities of text in favour of an image that the audience are then able to decode. You have the anchorage text that comes in the form of the headline and the subheading giving meaning 
to the image that the audience are seeing. This is very much an opinion, it's very much a feeling, it's fairly sensationalised news and again that is very characteristic of the tabloid press. So very simply we have this large dominant image of the Statue of Liberty and we know as a referential code, as a cultural code, that the Statue of Liberty connotes freedom and the Statue of Liberty uh, signifies democracy. It signifies freedom of speech, free people, a free nation. So the interesting thing about the pose of the Statue of Liberty in this instance is the head in the hands. Now this is what we might classify as a pro -eretic or an action code. It is a code that will have a shared meaning amongst the audience and to everybody reading obviously this head in hands pose signifies despair, it signifies embarrassment, it signifies an attempt to hide from what has just happened with the victory of Donald Trump and it portrays to the audience the feeling that socialists and left-wing supporters will certainly have to the decision of this election victory. Some of the reasons why this might be um, is because Donald Trump is obviously a Republican and although it doesn't fit comfortably with Conservative and Labour, Democrat in America and Republican could be seen as roughly equivalent to what we have in terms of these two parties. But not only this, you will remember some of the accusations over Donald Trump's behaviour, his treatment of women, um, his treatment of ethnic minorities, uh, people with disabilities during the election campaign. These things certainly don't sit well with a left-wing socialist uh, way of thinking. It is definitely the case that this newspaper um, has an exaggerated and a very firm opposition to everything that Donald Trump stood for. So this can be seen through this prioritic code and this semantic code. This would be a shared feeling amongst the audience of those who read the Daily Mirror. As well as this you have your hermeneutic or enigma code as it is sometimes called and it does pose an actual question through the headline text simply saying what have they done now combined with the picture the text gives this anchorage it gives it meaning um, so it suggests that what they've done is not a positive thing rather it is something that has caused despair and destruction and if we look behind where the Statue of Liberty is we can see that the clouds and the weather has caused this apocalyptic sort of feel. So this is using what we call the semantic codes, the colour palette, um, the way that something is presented, how we would associate that with a particular genre and in this case the reds, the blacks, uh, the swirl of grey we would think of as something akin to a horror style film or book um, and something that signifies perhaps the end of the world. An extension of the Enigma code would be the subheading underneath the main headline that says what this means for you and the world. This is encouraging people to look inside the newspaper um, as we've been met with quite a dramatic image and quite a dramatic question and quite a dramatic premise. Um, so it's inclusive of the audience and it's suggestive that this is going to have international impact. There's also a little bit of a division built between America and Britain. What have they done um, creates this sort of binary opposition, them and us. It may not be a surprise uh, that we're deflecting onto America about their bad decision making in light of uh, some of the accusations about Brexit and Britain and the rashness of the referendum. So put this in an international political climate. We as British people um, in 2016 made a big decision 
to leave the European Union. America, during the same year, made a big decision to appoint a very controversial figure as their president. Therefore, it has been named the American Brexit. Both of these decisions were unexpected. Both of these moves have been met with opposition from left-wing socialist um, audiences and political parties. And both decisions are seen to have a global impact. Now, if we're looking at a right-wing publication, obviously it would portray this victory in a different light. Now, interestingly, this image on the front was not intended for use um, in this manner on a new front cover of a newspaper. It was actually a painting um, by a British artist in 1989 during the punk era. Um, one of many anti-establishment paintings um, that had a look at the structures of society and questioned some of the ways in which um, society is governed. So it's part of a punk movement that seeks to question uh, some of the things that society consider to be important and symbolic um, and things that make nations great. But here it really suits the political agenda of the Daily Mirror um, because it's taking this iconic image of America and turning it into something um, that signifies that they've made a grave error, that they've made a big mistake um, and that it's going to have disastrous, far-reaching, potentially life-changing consequences for the audience and for the world. Now if we look at the double page article as well um, that goes alongside this front cover, it's the same story. You've got the patriotic um, symbolic codes, you have the American flag and the colours associated with that. Um, you have this kind of jubilance amongst the predominantly white male audience, as it would seem, of Donald Trump supporters. In contrast, you have Hillary Clinton and her calm demeanour, um, accepting defeat graciously and generally giving the sense of a more contained and a more appealing leader. So overall, the combination of the front cover with the Statue of Liberty um, holding her head in her hands and the double page article of aggressive Trump supporters aims to instill fear and trepidation and uncertainty about the future based on this election result. This use of emotive rhetoric will just reinforce the audience's current left-wing standpoint. Now if we think about the whole edition of the Daily Mirror that we're studying as well, look at some of the stories in there and consider how in line these are with the socialist left-wing ideologies that we're presented with in this edition of the Daily Mirror. Obviously we've got the headline that deals with knife crime. Could it be that the suggestion is the Conservative Party aren't dealing with something that is going on at the moment in society that should be taking priority? Also, we have to think about the Daily Mirror and its place online. It's the case that, and we know this, that newspaper sales have been declining over the years. The Daily Mirror was once the most popular British tabloid. The sales have now declined to uh, 716,000 copies a day. A lot of this can be explained away through the presence of online news. And newspapers have had to adapt to the convergent society that we live in. And news has had to change, we know this. Um, as audiences, we can access breaking news as it happens via social media. Um, we live in a society where news is at our fingertips every second of every day. The Daily Mirror has done its part in the current media landscape to keep up with these trends. The Daily Mirror has a large presence 
on social media sites. Also, it has its own version of the newspaper, The Mirror Online, where audiences can access different pieces of news regionally and nationally. Also, with online news, there is the opportunity for the audience to talk back. This links in well with Clay Shirky's end of audience theory, where the audience becomes part of the product um, and part of the discussion. This is really relevant when it comes to online news. In particular, the Got A Story feature allows audiences to submit their own stories and reactions and opinions to other major breaking events online. After the Trump election campaign, there was a swirl of opinion and there was vast amounts of contribution from audiences of the Daily Mirror. And it gives them another platform to express their reaction to what's happened. Um, and it gives them a way of becoming part of the news item themselves. So some of the theories that we can apply to news in general and in specific to the Daily Mirror Things like power and profit, and we've talked about current and Seaton. The Trinity Group, as was now Reach PLC, um, has become quite a diverse and energetic force. And the diversity of this group, um, branching out into regional um, and national territory, means that the more varied stories can come across to audiences. We could think about um, Livingston and Lunt and their thoughts about regulation. Particularly prominent after the 2011 Leveson inquiry as a consequence of phone hacking and tabloid journalists hacking into the phones of both celebrities and members of the public in order to just get a good story. Now, after this, tabloid journalists have had to rebuild their reputation and have had to adapt to a society that doesn't necessarily trust the tabloid press. But again, the rebranding of the Daily Mirror as this intellectual tabloid, um, something that will serve the needs of the socialist population, is really important in terms of the reputation that the Daily Mirror is trying to build in a post-Leveson society. We could also apply cultural industries, um, Hesmond Howe. We can think about how the presence of the mirror online as well as in print will maximise the profit, will minimise the risk of people dismissing the news industry or the traditional news industry altogether. Specific to this edition of the Daily Mirror, the set product edition, we can apply Gerdner's cultivation theory. There are many views and many images of the post-election victory of Donald Trump that aim to grow ideas and fears and suspicions into the minds of the audience. And the quantity of these images that have almost become a joke to audiences will subliminally grow a negative view of Donald Trump in some of the more socialist minds of the audience. And we could apply Stuart Hall's theory of encoding and decoding. It's quite obvious what this image is trying to suggest, but we do have to use our cultural references. We do have to use our prior understanding and way of piecing together the symbolism of what we're seeing in front of us. So just to sum up at the end, if we were to think about the audience for the Daily Mirror, which again um, you have to do as part of the criteria for the exam, um, the YouGov poll suggests that it is a predominantly working class, labour supporting audience, probably of C2 to E demographic. This hasn't covered absolutely everything to do with the Daily Mirror. This has scratched the surface of some of the issues of ownership um, and some of the analysis of the front cover and the article that formed the set product. You will obviously have to read your whole set edition of the Daily Mirror yourself. 
and measure the stories and measure the articles and the headlines against what you know to be true in terms of industry context and audience context. And consider the purpose and the value of each story. Do they sit well with our current tabloid sensationalism? Do they sit comfortably with our current set of news values? So as you're reading, you're keeping an active mind and considering the encoding behind some of the images and behind some of the headlines. What ideas the producers and writers and editors are aiming to grow in the minds of their audiences.